Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere. Tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC. And stream on Hulu. We're back with another month of the movies and TV shows and various other things that we watched. Uh, I want to start real quick with something that it technically isn't in my list, but I want to do a quick, like, if you guys are cool with it, like a quick little recap of the whole Fantastic Fest collective that I saw because it's been scattered all over the feed. I don't know how many people listen to all of it, um, but the short version is... Cam is very good. It's coming out in November. You might be the killer is very good. It should be available in November. Um, I'm trying to think what else I saw. Uh, uh, I used to be normal. Uh, the tale of a boy band fangirl is fucking delightful uh, and is one of my higher rated movies of the year. Um, uh I mean, those are really the three that I want to shout out. Those three are awesome. Uh, all the other movies were also very, very good, but those three are definitely my top three of the trip. So I just wanted to throw them out there. If you haven't had a chance to listen to some of those bonus episodes and interviews, give them a shot because I think I did semi-decent uh, doing the interviews. All right, guys. So let's talk about the movies and TV shows and comic books and all of the other things that our eyes have passed by over the last month. Um We'll just continue to do this round robin. Uh, who wants to kick us off? I will take. I'll take the uh, the inaugural punch here. We watched Insatiable, uh, which I told you guys uh, after like the first episode. I think I messaged you guys and was like, "You have to watch Insatiable. It's on Netflix. Um, it's fucking amazing." Um, I have to pump the brakes a little bit on my endorsement of the fi- of the series. Because the first half of the season is just great. But then it does the the Riverdale where um, the second half of the season is just people being shitty so that they can move the plot line along. And uh, it really bothers the shit out of me. So um, I would say it's worth a watch if you don't have anything better to watch like watch the first two episodes they're fucking great if you really feel the desire continue on and when it gets hard you're not missing anything if you miss the last like five episodes it's just more of the same all right Mm. i'm gonna go with a movie that i watched a screener of before fantastic fest to decide if i wanted to do an interview or not and i opted to not do the interview uh and that is between worlds uh the newest nicholas cage movie um nicholas cage has been getting a lot of great press because of mandy which i still haven't gotten a chance to see uh and between worlds i was hoping would be uh really fun now i'm told that i i missed out on the excitement by not seeing it in a theater with a crowd that was like laughing and having fun with how bad it is but when you're just sitting alone in your bedroom, staring at a laptop screen, it's not very fun. Uh, it's a, it's a film in which Nicolas Cage plays a truck driver, uh, who falls in love with a woman and his dead ex wife decides to possess that woman's teenage daughter. And he begins having sex with both of them. And that's, that's the movie. And it's, it's just bad. It's not a good movie. It's not fun. I didn't enjoy it. Uh, and I could have lived a healthy life not seeing it. It is in my bottom 10 of the entire year. So, uh, yeah, not a good movie. Okay. Wow. Um, I 
am ill prepared, so I'm going to try to figure out what I watched since the last time we recorded. Uh, but I did recently watch on Sunday. Uh, me and Jade watched the original Halloween together, and it was wonderful. And she didn't enjoy it, but I thoroughly <laughs> I enjoyed had a good it. Time. <laughs> I had a great time because it was just one of those things where I was like, you know what? I haven't fucking celebrated Halloween. Um, let's, let's, let's watch the original Halloween. So we lit candles. We turned all the lights off. I went to the store. I got apple cider. I heated up the apple cider. We had nice warm apple cider and we watched the original Halloween and it, it, uh, it breaks my heart that she didn't enjoy it. She thought it was slow and she thought it was boring and it's, it's always one of my favorites. So that was, that was what I watched. Everyone knows it's a good movie. I, I don't have to say much else on it. You know, some, some asshole on the group is going to be like, well, I think Halloween's boring. Yeah. So, because I, I have it on my, uh, on my shutter queue, on mm-hmm. my, my list on shutter. And, um, I read a couple of the reviews because I was like, I wonder what people are saying. And some people were like, this is my first watch. And I thought it was really dry. And I don't understand why it's so famous. It's like, you are 12 years old. Get the fuck off a of shutter. Yeah, it's like as soon as it starts, there's just little things that like – and that's the thing. I feel like people – like I always – I don't know. I, I feel like my generation's good with that and the, the newer generations, which I'm not that old. But like I do feel like the 18 and 20-year-olds, they, they, they can't put themselves in a time. You know, like I can watch a fucking black and white horror movie and like no, it doesn't really hold up in that sense. But like you can appreciate – you can appreciate everything Vincent Price did. Yeah. For when he did it, you know, yeah, and, and they and they have trouble with it. They're like comparing it like, oh, Halloween wasn't as artistic as mother. It's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand that at all, because especially like I, I can speak for Matt and I can speak for myself. I mean, and, and Brian, you just gave your, you know, your thoughts on it. But Matt and I had a very similar. I mean, Matt's a couple years younger than me, but he still had a lot of the same general experiences as, as me watching you know, you'd go to the video store, you'd go to the pharmacist or wherever the, you know, the, 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 the corner store and they'd have the, the racks and racks of horror VHS tapes. And you'd be like, you know, scaring the piss out of yourself by just looking at the covers, you know, and I watched a lot of eighties stuff because of that, seeing stuff as a young adult that I had, had seen covers of as a child. And, but then I also, you know, I, I can, appreciate stuff from the seventies. I don't really love stuff from the seventies cause it's just a different, I don't know. I mean, like I can get into it. I just don't seek it out as often. Sixties no. horror. I mean like sixties horror is fun. You watch the hammer horror stuff and it's, it's, it's absolutely a horror is a product of its time. I mean, yeah. I, I love fifties horror because teen horror in the fifties is just a love letter. Like to buddy Holly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, that's all it is to me. Or, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, blood beach or whatever it is, the horrors of blood or whatever that monster where it coming oh, out horror and party beach. I love yeah, yeah, that. Horror horror and party. Beach. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I get it. I mean, I get that it's, I, I just don't understand that concept of like, cause when I was in the early two thousands, I would watch movies that were 20 years old and I was like, Oh, this shit is so good. But kids aren't yeah. watching movies from like, you know, 1998 right now being like, this stuff is so fun. They're being like, well, this doesn't hold up. Where's the sense of fun there? Well, yeah. And that's the thing. Brian Brian and I have talked about this because, I mean, it's not a secret that Brian and I love uh, love uh, Disney and Disney films. But like even like our niece and nephew, like the movies that, you know, Brian and I would watch whatever the newest Disney cartoon was, but we could very easily also watch like you know the sword in the stone and the jungle book and like these movies that were like 60 year old animated films but like our niece and nephew if it's not a computer animated disney film they have no interest in watching like a 2d animation yeah and it's it's insane and it's funny because like (laughs) you learn that you you can find a whole error of things and and my buddy just really started listening to 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 the podcast so bone if you're out there i appreciate you supporting me but we were like talking about the podcast and movies we watched and i was like yeah we work so well together because we each found our niche of like horror that we love and i was like i love 70 slashers scott loves uh 80s monsters and my brother loves cheesy bad movies and that's like (laughs) i mean i do that's accurate right i feel like that's the best way to describe the three of us but i wasn't alive in the fucking 70s 
<laughs> you know? that you can't appreciate it, though. That's exactly. Point, you know, like, I don't understand. And I guess that we're not ripping on teenage horror fans. I think we're just ripping on teenagers. A very vocal, specific one. Because like, <laughs> I don't think that it's all them, but there are, like, very vocal, specific people that aren't afraid to be, like, well, I personally think that this is shut the fuck exactly. Up. Like, kind of, yeah. Like, so, yeah, you don't go, you don't see those people at horror cons. The worst no. thing I've ever heard. There are two worst things I've ever heard at a horror con. One, Tusk is a good movie, and two, that they somebody didn't like the witch because they couldn't understand it. They couldn't yeah. understand what they were saying. I'm like, are you fucking serious? The guy sounded like a redneck anyway, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, the issue which, with, with the previous generation. And then I'll let you go, Max. We're going on a tangent. Is they are trying to grow up so fast, true. and it's like sixteen year olds acting like they have college degrees. And in return, they're making millennials like me grow up even faster. So now I'm a twenty eight year old, sixty year old man sitting in my rocking chair, bitching about the rap scallions and fucking how <laughs> the good old days used to be. And they're they're mumble crap. Yeah. Just yelling at kids for being on my lawn. Get out of here! <laughs> All right, Scott, what's your next one on your uh, oh, list of things man. to watch? Uh, so keeping with the TV uh, episodes, shows we've watched, we uh, finished The Good Place Season 2. It is such a delightful show. Uh, and we have started watching Season 3. But we are now watching it once a week, which blows because I need to binge watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so keeping place. keeping in last month where I had my movies from the worst mo- the worst thing that I watched to the best thing that I watched, um, there's only one thing on my list that is a rewatch that I'd seen previously. Uh, I rewatched Mad Men from the 80s, um, and it's it's mostly a bad movie. Yeah, it still doesn't then, really hold up, does it? No, and the only thing that's great is maybe the last like 10 or 15 minutes when there's just like seven decapitations, like rapid fire. <laughs> Uh, I like the kills in it, but the kills only make up about five minutes of the uh, 90 minute slog that the film is. <laughs> yeah, I definitely Scott Rogered that one. Yeah, the kills are great. That's all you need. Like, go and search Madman 1980 kills and you'll see everything you need yeah, to see that's, in that movie. Oh, that's what I should have done the first time. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brian. I watched House on the Haunted Hill. and uh, Wait, House the, on the Hill 99? No. The Vincent Price. The okay. Vincent All Price. Right. Still great. Yeah, so good, good time. Great. Really, really good time. There's not much to really to 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 talk about. You know, it's just a great, great vibe, great story. Can get you sucked in. And it was a wonderful thing to watch. And it's just I got really excited because I didn't realize how long it's been since I've seen it. And just starting off with Vincent Price's floating head just got me really like a really like nostalgic. I felt like I was a young kid. Uh, at my grandfather's because he was the one that really introduced me and my brother to House on the Haunted Hill, House of Wax, The Fly, all those movies. My gr- it was thanks to my grandfather. Um, yeah, he loved Vincent. Yeah, Price, man. and it got me really, really jacked up, and I and I really enjoyed watching that. So yeah, that's what I. That's another one I watched. <laughs> all right, back to Scott. <laughs> what? Oh, that was fast! Wow. Um, yeah, we, all right, so I Scott Rogers those. <laughs> so this is the last one in my uh, TV list for the month. I watched the first season. I didn't even finish it, but I tried to watch the first season of uh, Channel Zero, Candle Cove. And um, I got about halfway, and then I was like, nah. It's, it's, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to go back and watch any of the other seasons. I have a really hard time with serialized horror. Uh, I don't know if I could actually point out a serious horror show that I give have given a shit about enough to watch the whole thing of a season, much less multiple seasons. Uh, ex- I mean, Evil Dead, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead does not count because it's horror comedy and it's yeah. amazing television and super hyper gory. So, and Bruce Campbell, I mean, the chin. So what can you say? And I feel like sometimes, like even, I, so I've watched the first two seasons of American Horror Story at this point and neither one of those seasons, like I didn't hate either of those seasons. I I thought Murder House was really good and Asylum was fine. <laughs> But like at the end of the day, I was like, I don't understand how these both couldn't have just been a solid 90 minute film. Like it didn't need to be a 13 hour story. Right. And I think that's always my issue with most of the serialized horror series is that it feels like it's really stretching to get to its episodes as opposed to just like telling a good, concise story. Yeah. I don't know. The problem with that is like it's it's tension. You know, you got to got to maintain tension for like 13 episodes. It's crazy. 
Yeah, and it's probably, I, I'm sure those shows also weren't, those shows probably were not designed to be binged, honestly. Uh, like, those are the shows that probably are supposed to be watched weekly, <laughs> because, like, I don't know, it, it's kind of like when you read, um, it's the different, so, so I've been reading a lot of graphic novels lately, yeah. and there is a world of difference between reading a graphic novel uh, versus reading them as single issues because it's always like the last panel's like, Oh no. And then like you turn the page, it's like resolution. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, yeah. It really takes a lot of the tension out of the story. Even, even reading like back issues as a single issue, instead of just flipping through a trade paperback graphic novel um, is very different because I was lucky enough to get, the entire saga of the swamp thing um, that Alan Moore did as the individual, I, I won an eBay auction a couple years back and I want, I got all of the, the, the books, like the actual comics, but I have already read all whatever five or six compiled graphic novels there are from that whole run. Um, and it's way different because even though I'd already read them, it was so much different to read them with the tactile feel, smell, you know, just that that whole experience of reading a comic book as it was originally made. That you're right, Matt. It's it's a, I mean, even if it's not just the like, oh, resolution, next page. It's the amount. It's the experience of the pacing is just so different when they take out the ads, and you don't have to like close the book and then open another one to to get to the next piece of the story. You know who I really feel bad for? Fans of the Phantom. Because, like, if you're reading, like, the Daily Times, Marmaduke and Garfield can knock out a punchline (laughs) in three fucking panels. But, like, the Phantom, when I was a kid and would pick up my grandfather's newspaper, it would just be, like, the Phantom sitting there and then, like, sighing. And then his partner being, like, Penny for your thoughts. And then it's, like, see more tomorrow. And it's, like, I have to wait 24 hours to see what happens next. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we're about to hit a long chunk of movies that I saw in the theater thanks to the AMC A-list card. Uh, So I saw Peppermint, (laughs) and it's trash, but it's just the right type of trash for me. Uh, It's it's basically, that, and I think I explained this to a couple people already, but it's like someone wrote a Steven Seagal movie and Steven Seagal was like, nah, I'm busy. And they're like, do you think Jennifer Gardner would be interested? Because it's the most, like, dumb action revenge movie ever, but just female lead instead of, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Chuck Norris or any of those guys. But it's, I mean, here's the plot line. Tell me if you've heard this one before. A bunch of gangsters kill somebody's family, but they get away with it, and they come back a year later ready to kill like that's every steven seagal movie uh but it it is i was like taken aback by how gory and graphic it was so it's fun it'll definitely end up on my dvd shelf one day uh and on to brian (laughs) on to me okay so i have a lot of like old old things that people are outdated people don't care about so if anyone's looking for something newer to watch i watched maniac on netflix and man was i I took that off my list Really? I enjoyed it, like, from begin to end. I, I have a new respect for Jonah Hill after watching that show. And there was a few times where I got lost, and I'm like, all right, this doesn't make any sense. But I wrote it out, and it was well worth it. At the end of the season, I was just nothing but satisfied. I might just Great. ask you to to break down the entire season for me so I don't have to slog through it because – man, like I watched the first episode and neither Megan nor I were feeling it. I like the visuals are great. Actually, I think we watched two, two, we watched the first two episodes, two or three episodes. I can't even remember now, but I just don't care. Like I like Jonah Hill, but I, and I'm, I'm sure that it gets better, but you're going to have to sell me on this off, off, uh, <laughs> offline. Okay. No, I mean, honestly, it, just speaking from my perspective, I'm not going to put you through it. I mean, I could give you a whole spoiler alert off the episode, but I, I I was sucked in from episode one. So if by episode three you're not feeling it, I don't think you'll feel it. I, it started to drag like later on, you okay, know. Well, so happened. yeah, I don't think I don't think you'd enjoy it if you if you haven't enjoyed it yet. That's just my opinion, though. All right, on to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I have. A back to backer, all right. 
That's strictly fine. due to the fact that their names are so similar. <laughs> uh, so I watched Terrifier. Please. And Terrify. Yes. Oh, I thought you were going to say Terror Firmer. <laughs> no, no. I would never do that on my own. <laughs> but Terrifier, I did not enjoy Damn really it, dude. At all. This fucking movie has been on my maybe watch. And it's just like every time I bump into someone, they're like, it's surprisingly good. And then I bump into the next person like, it was awful. Don't watch it. And I never know. Well, so now I'm not watching it. Well, you, you, I think that you should watch it and then talk about it maybe next month because um, you might have a different take on it. But here's my take. It's well done. But. The plot and script are so threadbare, well-worn, and really off-color that it just doesn't hit for me. Like, there's a really – I mean, any woman that sees this movie and likes it has me shaking – has me scratching my fucking head because there's one specific scene. Matt, you've seen it, right? I haven't seen it, uh, but I know of the scene that you're about to talk about. Okay, I'm not going to say anything. Everyone's been like – yeah, everyone's been like, yo, this movie, like, whether you love it or hate it, whatever, but there is, like, a thing that will never get out of your brain after so you watch it. It wasn't I, – I would not go that far. But the scene in question is really tacky. It's not well done. It's just incredible, incredibly misogynistic and did not need to be made. Like, the shit that I saw in a Serbian film, which I still haven't finished and never will, that's really scarring. This is just – really poor taste and i hated it i fucking hated it like not the whole movie itself the movie's internal logic is ridiculous and stupid but it's well made like it, the, the the cinematography is good the guy that actually plays art the clown is good and creepy i i don't know it's it's one of those movies that i was like i can't believe i'm gonna finish this shit because i was because I had heard so many good things, but I really was unhappy with the fact that I watched it because I just, I, I, I know that I didn't specifically pay to see it because I watched it on Shudder or Netflix. I think it's Shudder. Um, doesn't matter. Wherever it is, I didn't pay, pay to watch it, but I mean, my, I am part of, I am a data point somewhere in some server that I, that I watched that movie and I kind of hate myself for it because I don't. I don't think that it's I don't think that it should have a wide release. It's one of those it's not as bad as August Underground, but it is in really fucking poor taste. Well, I'm not interested. It's like a I Spit um, on Your Grave remake kind of thing. Like I don't even know if it's as bad as I Spit on Your Grave 2010 or whatever that movie was, but like it is really not and I don't mean that in a like it's edgy and subversive i just mean that it's in poor taste and the people that yeah. like it for that are not the kind of people that i really want to spend a whole lot of time around because we have such different worldviews yeah and i don't see i've actually never seen uh i, I spit on your grave remake because don't, do i not. don't i don't i don't care for 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 rape right we yeah. all know that i i just i it's tough for me to watch and if i do there's got to be some redeeming quality and even if this movie did what the original did as far as redeeming quality. It couldn't do it fully because it doesn't have that 70s slasher feel. Like the only reason I can watch I Spit on Your Grave was dude getting dick cut off in the bathtub. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing about so... <laughs> the original is so less graphic. Like the remake of I Spit on Your Grave, the rape scene is like 15 minutes long. It's insane. It's the longest rape scene possibly that I know of. Except maybe like whatever uh, irreversible, but I'm not watching that. Yeah, you know I loved I spit. Oh, I didn't love, but I liked the original. I spit in your grave. I watched when I was in high school, and I was like, you know, it would. I understood the gravity of the situation, but it was done in such a kind of like a hand wavy manner that mm-hmm. I just went for the ki- the revenge kills, and I loved that shit. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, absolutely. Like if I had to pick between watching Last House on the Left and I Spit in Your Grave, as far as like gross rapey shit i would pick i spin your grave which is ironic because you'd think that the one about rape revenge would be less grimy or would be more grimy but it's actually less yeah than, than last house on the left so how was terrified not good 
Uh, <laughs> I really, I thought that first of all, I, so you guys remember, oh, what's it called? That, so that I, found I footage movie like, with the stretch face ghosts, Matt. Um, oh, that uh, loved. Grave Encounters. Yeah. It was like Grave Encounters, but uh, Argentinian or something like that. It's, it was dumb as fuck. So I, so I might be wrong. And, and, you know, she'll definitely be vocal if she listens Katie. to this episode. But Katie she saw it, it the same night, the same night that I saw You Might Be the Killer. And she was like, you missed out. You saw a bad movie. I saw a great movie. And I was like, dude, You Might Be the Killer might be one of the best horror films I've ever seen. Um, and you know what? I'm seeing a whole lot of people backing me up after they aired it on Sci-Fi a couple weeks it's ago. On so. It's on Shutter. Oh. I watched it on Shutter, man. Oh, you might be the killer or terrified? No, 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 terrified. Oh, sorry. I was talking about you might be the killer. Sorry. They aired on sci fi, and like everybody it's in the group up. who watched it has been like, yo, that was like Mario was like, Matt is so fucking right about how good this movie is. Well, it's also so, really like, Mario's shit, you know? Like, oh, Mario. Yeah, it's a screen movie. Yeah, it's it, exactly. the modern day screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, so both meh. Uh, no, <laughs> I would say one is worse than the other. I would not okay. recommend watching either, but at least Terrified was so vanilla that I could at least like exist while it was going on and not be offended. It was just dumb. It was like Grave Encounters meets Pet Cemetery with no answers oh. and subtitles. Um, so I saw. <laughs> The new Predator movie. And I really fucking liked it. And I know a lot of people hated it. That's Joe Dante, right? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. No. Fred Decker. Oh, Fred Decker. Sorry, Shane, sorry. Yeah, it's Fred Decker wrote it and Shane Black yeah, directed right. it. Um, and it just, you know what? There's moments that feel like Night of the Creeps. There's moments that feel like Monster Squad. So I fucking loved it because I love those movies. And it's super funny. Like, I think that that's the, the issue that people are having with it is that a lot of people went to see another Predator movie that was like an action movie. And like, this was an action movie with a lot of comedy in it. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Michael Key uh, or Key. For, what's what's his name, Ryan? Uh, Michael Shea? Um, no, from uh, from Key, Key, and and, uh, Key and Peele. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. His first Jordan, name. there's there's Jordan Peele. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I apologize. I think it's Michael Keegan K uh, or Key, but um, he's hysterical in it. Uh, everyone's just super funny. And it's, you know, basically the the crux of the movie, the thing that everybody, whether they loved it or hated it, agreed on is that the dialogue is fast and funny. And it's everything that you love about a Shane Black script or a Joe Decker script. Uh, and I don't understand why people are bitching because they're the main characters and are in like 85 to 90% of the movie. And then the other percent is a fucking predator monster. So like <laughs> to me, that's a great movie, <laughs> but whatever. I really like the predator. See it for yourself and make your own decision. I don't blame you if it's not what you expect it, but I went with no real love for the predator, but a whole lot of love for Fred Decker. And I walked out very pleased. Brian, your turn. <laughs> okay. How many do you guys have left? I've got four left. I have four as well, but I'm going to do doubles on both. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll do some doubles then. Um, I watched Rear Window. I'm going to do two two old movies. Nice. I watched choice. I watched Rear Window for the first time. First? All right. Yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, great fucking movie. I have so I've slept on, I have slept on Alfred Hitchcock for forever. Uh, I, I watched the birds when I was younger and I thought it was like, meh. And then I always liked psycho. And then one day they, for like one night only, they, they were showing North by Northwest in the movie theater. So I was like, let me just go to the movies by myself and watch this. And I was mesmerized by it. And every time I watch a Hitchcock film, I just, I feel like I get mesmerized. I feel like it's just, he, he can just draw me in. So I, I, I absolutely loved it. And believe it or not, I watch silent films just to see the appreciation or if it's on a list. And, and I, I got to say the general starring Buster Keaton, I laughed out loud at a few scenes in that fucking movie. Very, very good movie. 
I can't really suggest anyone watch it because I get it. I mean, fucking silent films are tough to get through if you don't fucking care for them. But man, there were some scenes that were really funny in that movie. So those are two are oldies that I watched. All right, Scott. All right. I am um, uh, combining these two strictly due to the fact that they both are um, four letters all in caps that I watched. <laughs> Isn't that the most ridiculous arbitrary thing? Uh, so uh, Solo. Uh, mm-hmm. We watched Solo right when it came out on VOD. Megan, uh, I think she just rented it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't think I love, I mean, it's no Rogue One, but uh, it's good. It's real. All right. Uh, d- and then Doom. Uh, I-, I came up on Netflix or Hulu. And I slogged my way through it, falling asleep multiple times. And it was really bad. It was I know. as bad as I thought it was going to be. And it sucked because I liked the idea. When I, when it first came out, I was like, oh, like the fucking first person fucking shooter. You only get two minutes of that at the end, though. Yeah. I never watched it. It just, I, it was one of those things. But by the time it became an opportunity, I've heard way too many. Like, I haven't heard one person say it was okay. It's just bad across the board. So I haven't put myself through it. What they should have done was have it be event horizon on the moon because that's kind of what the movie or the the video game was in my opinion eh, whatever i mean it's it's been like 15 20 years since it came out i don't even know but um it's not it's not worth a revisit if you've seen it before and it's not worth a visit if you've never been perfect <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so i guess i'll just double up um because both of these start with ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> since we're going for whatever uh i saw a star is born and it was good not great um i definitely agree uh i definitely agree that it is um it is what it is it, it, it's gonna win some awards uh i think that it's got some serious uh second act issues that i would have really have liked to be cut down and made shorter um, but otherwise, it's fine. The music is really good. Lady Gaga is really good. Bradley Cooper is a pretty decent first-time director. Um, but the other movie that I saw that I actually really, really fucking liked was A Simple Favor. Um, Paul Feig attempting a uh, kind of serious drama. Uh, it's just a really fun, well-paced, good suspense film. Um so I had a blast with that one. I don't want to talk about that one too much because it, it kind of is one of those movies where every like 10 minutes is another twist or turn in the story. But if you're into like a cool modern day noir film uh, and you like Anna Kendrick, then you should say it. Hmm. Nice. All right, Brian. So it's me again, huh? Um, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Real quick, I'll do one that I, I don't really have much to say because everyone's kind of already seen it or about to see it. Saw Mandy. It's fucking great. Cheddar Goblin. Cheddar Goblin, uh, you uh, eat all the mac and cheese. <laughs> I will say this. It's a great movie I will never watch again. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's That's definitely a one and done. does. Yeah. Like, Beyond it, the Black Rainbow. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it was like, oh, this is awesome. It's fucking Nicolas Cage fucking, you know, nonsense. Never have to watch it again. And then I watched, started watching a show, and then I fell asleep. But I, I, I did a five k that day, so cut me some, <laughs> cut me some slack. And then I had to record. But uh, the witching season is on Amazon Prime or Shutter, and it is like a, uh, it's like a Twilight Zone, but but horror all takes place around Halloween. And I gotta say, like the uh, the first episode was endearing. I guess that's the word I would use. Like it, it wasn't like, oh, this is so great. I got to tell anyone, but it's like I can watch this, and they're like twenty minutes tops. They're they're really short, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. The witching cool. season. Hmm. All right, Scott, what's your last two? All right, so I watched an anthology film finally called Southbound, which I'm sure you guys know about, right? I, I've heard of it. You, I was let. No, I'll let you say. I'll let. I'll let you talk. <laughs> it was okay. I liked yeah. one of the. F- four or five stories i like the fact that they're all interwoven Uh um and it has the girl from uh john dies at the end in it she's one of the main characters in that if you've seen john dies at the end it's the woman who's in that and she's also in oh fuck 
what's that movie that came out this summer that I watched that I talked about on the podcast? Uh, something break sequence break um, about the killer uh, uh, arcade game. Uh, uh, yeah, she was in that as well. But um, it's not a it's it's not a an anthology that I would come back to. Most anthologies aren't. Uh, I liked it better than most anthologies because the end of each one was the start of the next one. And I appreciated that, but the wraparound story was kind of nonsense, especially in a timeline sense, like I like uh, actual chronological sense. So I don't know. Um, it was okay. It, it, it was not one that I would go tell random people at a con that they need to watch. You know what I'm saying? But then I watched a really bad, but beautiful, film it seems like i've watched a lot of bad shit this month which is odd because i usually have a lot more nice things to say but um i want to say it was south by last year or something that this movie this this scottish uh ghost movie called the lodgers came Mm. out and i was like oh it's a period ghost like a victorian style i mean it's 1920s but it looks kind of victorian gothic um rather not victorian but gothic um it looks gothic it's a period piece it's it's spooky i was like megan we gotta watch this and i i was just kept hounding her about about it i was like babe when this comes out let's watch this you know and she was like okay whatever as long as it's not too scary we started watching it because it's on netflix i want to say and i was so stoked and within the first 10 minutes megan goes this is an incest movie. I'm not watching it. <laughs> she wasn't wrong. Um, and I stayed up till midnight on a work night. By the way, I get up at 5 a.m., but I was so annoyed with this movie that I was like just trying to finish it because I was, I just, I thought there has to be some redeeming quality to it. I need answers. There were no answers. The only redeeming quality was how pretty the scenery is. The cinematography is not bad. It's quite competent, but the acting is very bland because the script is very bland. The storyline is just fucking dumb. (laughs) So I highly recommend you avoid the lodgers unless you're into incest. And if so, there are much better, sexier things to go watch on the internet on Pornhub because pretty much every fucking Gen Z or or whatever they are, you know, 18 to 22 year old right now is into stepsister porn. So go watch that. Don't watch this shit. (laughs) Jesus. All right. Uh, So I guess I'll take us home on this one. Uh, I'll put the one above the other because I think Brian will have actually Brian will have something to say about both of these, I think. Uh Uh, So I watched the second season of Big Mouth, which was delightful and a continuation of all the things that I loved about the first season of Big Mouth. It's fucking great. Um, It's a great show. Uh, It might take a couple episodes to get going if you haven't watched it. uh, The first season Uh, Netflix does this weird thing with their adult animated film uh, animated shows. I think they did the same thing with Bojack where. The first like two or three episodes, you're just like, this is just like a an adult swim show that didn't make it. And then you're like, oh no, no, no. This has that love and and like heart that I expect out of a Netflix show that I don't get on normal TV shows. Uh Big Mouth is fucking hysterical, but it captures the struggle of teenage puberty and adolescence so fantastically. Um, and it just goes against all like every instinct of where you think a joke is going to go. It goes the opposite. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to use an example that Brian um, used to pitch me on the show. And it's in the first season. There's a scene where the dad's talking up the mom and they're about to have sex. And he's like, just get ready, baby. Here it comes. We're going to do it all night. And then he like gets in the bed and the camera pans over to the clock that says seven o'clock. And then it flips to seven Oh one and it pans back over. And he's like all stretched out in the bed. And he goes, I can't believe we had sex for 24 hours in one minute. <laughs> 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 like, like, it's like, that's the humor throughout the whole show. It's fucking brilliant setup and punchline. Uh, 
anything you want to throw in there, Brian, before I move on to my last thing? No, I have I have one more thing to bring up uh, outside of Big Mouth for, for what okay. I watch. So I'll let you finish and then I'll go. All right. And then the last thing I watched was my favorite movie that I've watched this month uh, so far uh, as of the time of this recording, because we'll probably put this out after the Halloween in theaters now. Uh, and that might change things. But uh, Bedtime at the El Royale was just a really fucking fun Everything that I wanted a modern day Quentin Tarantino movie to be that Quentin Tarantino movies have lacked since like Pulp Fiction. Um, so it's just a fun you got you got your John Hamm in there. You got your Chris Hemsworth in there. You got your Jeff Bridges in there. Like it's a solid little cast. Uh, Nick Offerman pops up for a little bit. Jerry from from Parks and Rec has a small cameo. Um, and they're all in there. And it's basically uh, three people check into a hotel uh, for different reasons, and it's a pretty much an abandoned hotel, and then different things happen, and pieces start to fall into place, and, uh, you know, a cult is involved in some ways, and a, a robbery from years ago is a piece of the puzzle, and it's all these little things all combining, and it's a period piece film that takes place in the 60s. Uh, it's just a fucking fantastic movie and it it's like two hours and 15 minutes but it flies like a it felt like 90 minutes it moves every second it's moving forward so just a great movie definitely in my top 10 of the year so far cool um Brian, take us home the last thing i want to take you guys home with is a podcast right and i we've we've we've, we've, we've talked about this on the podcast but i really really I really want to pitch this specific topic that they're discussing, which is last podcast on the left is talking about the West Memphis three and whether you like true crime or don't, I strongly suggest everybody listen to this podcast about it because I have watched several documentaries um, on the West Memphis three and the information that I've gotten from this has been insane. Scott, if you're someone that really doesn't care for that true crime stuff, the, the murders are talked about for maybe two minutes i mean the whole basis is really about the satanic panic and just how fucked up our justice system is and how insane it is and and how like these three boys got sent to fucking jail one of which was just a, a slow person that was trying to help the authorities but they realized that they could manipulate him it's just fucking insane and i really really suggest everyone listen to it um because it's fucking, I mean, I think there's nothing more incredible than like looking back and realize that like, you know, I've, you know, we lived through like the fucking satanic panic. You know what I mean? Like we lived through like Marilyn Manson and like everyone's parents, like just thinking like that there was like cults in every fucking corner and devil worship and fucking insane shit. And uh, we didn't realize how bad, I didn't realize how fucking bad it, it actually got and how many lives were fucking affected by it. So Watch that because they actually bring up stories too of other people that got wrongfully accused for for similar situations. So I really, really suggest everyone listen to that. Uh, I guess because I think it actually gets mentioned in the podcast that I appeared on. Uh, also, check out Geek History Lesson that had <laughs> your boy Matt Kelly on it uh, talking about my top five horror villains. And I, I've gotten some very kind words from people who enjoyed it. So. <laughs> Thank you, random fans of uh, Geek History Lesson, and I hope some of you are listening to us right now, because that would be fun. All right, well, that was everything for What Did We Watch This Month. We'll be back next month, obviously, with our list of movies that we watched that particular month as well. Uh, but stay tuned, because we got a whole shit ton of bonus material that's just about to be dropped all over your face. So get ready for all of the Halloween excitement wow. that we have around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to fucking blast a load of fucking bonus material all over your face. <laughs> we are going to throat fuck you with words. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.